adding custom icons to your Next.js project is really not the most intuitive thing to do, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's like a two-step process. It only takes a couple of minutes to do. So let's take a look at how to do it and dive right in. Okay, so here we are in a pretty much new Next.js application. And first off, let's define the icon we want to render later. So let's create a new folder, call it components. And inside that components, there's gonna be a folder called SVGs. And we want to actually, no, first off, let's get the icon we want. So I've prepared something right here. Um, what I usually do is just go to this website and find an icon I like. So for example, let's try out rendering this icon right here. Uh, because I've got the subscription, I can download the SVG, but you know, getting an SVG really uh, isn't very hard. Just get whatever icon you want to render. And then let's paste it in the SVGs. Now, holy, this is a pretty large icon. Well, that's totally fine. Let's rename it to something that is similar to a React component. And inside this SVGs folder, we're gonna have something called an index.ts. And inside this index file, um, we're gonna export all the SVGs that we have in this folder. So if we had more, then every single one we would export from this index file. And the syntax for that is export and then the default as web development from uh, this file right here. So that would be dot slash web development dot SVG. Okay, now that we got that done, we can try rendering out this icon in our front end. So let's have web development right here. Now, if we go to the browser and see if that works, no, that doesn't work. It says element type is invalid, expected a string for built-in components or a class function for composite components, but got object. So there is a problem in rendering this SVG as is, and let's work on fixing that. And fixing that is very simple, actually. The first thing we want to do is go to our next config. Now, mine has a different ending and might look a bit different than yours, but essentially it's the same thing as any next config. And what I've done is I've prepared a little code snippet right here. And essentially what we're gonna do is add a custom Webpack config to our Next.js project that uses, a, that uses an NPM package that's called at svgr slash Webpack. We can check that out slash web uh, pack on npm as you can see it got like uh, five and a half million weekly downloads it's a pretty like a small package but a lot of people are using it just because it's so helpful we can get rid of that now i'm gonna leave this code for you in the description we just need to paste that into our next.js config and that will basically use this red regex right here to search for any svg file so for example, the web development component we've initialized and then load that with a specific config that will make the icon just work pretty much. Now, after pasting this little code snippet, we also need to install the um, package for it that we mentioned right here. So that's an NPM package. We can install it by running npm install at svgr slash webpack. And that will install the package from this um, you know, from right here. We got that in our project, then we can restart the server. And now after restarting the server, because we've done changes in the next config, that's why we had to restart. We can go and take a look if our icon works. And yes, it does. It shows up right there in the top corner. Very nice. Now I'm zoomed into 340%. So this icon is really small. But what you can also do is just go to wherever you have the icon and say something like uh, class name, if you're also using Tailwind, and then say like text 8XL, which is gonna apply the CSS styles of um, font size 6 rem, which is like almost 100 pixels and line height one. And as you can see in the browser, the icon has become way larger. Now, if you're not using Tailwind, I've never done this, but we can try applying something like um, 
style. Let's see if that works. And then have like a font size of like 100. Let's see if that works. And that seems to also work. Let's do like 300. Okay, cool. So that also works. Um, I just wanted to try that. Um, so if you're not using Tailwind, you can do something like that. If you're using Tailwind, the class name I've just showed you also works. And now we've got the icon we want and we can uh, apply a lot of styles to it. So for example, we can add the um, text of red if we wanted to, you know, change the outline to be red. Now on this particular icon, that doesn't seem to work. But uh, if we had like an outline icon, that would work. Um, oh, actually, the reason that doesn't necessarily work is because we need to modify the SVG that we've pasted in. We don't need the width and the height because we'll define that specifically wherever we render the SVG. Now to get the color we want though, we're going to apply a fill. And that fill is going to be equal to current color on the SVG element. And now you can see the outline red was applied. So whatever class we applied right here, wherever we render the icon, there we're also going to have the red outline. Now let's uh, just for demonstration purposes, let's try that with one more icon. For example, this one right here, just to show you how it works. Um, let's paste the SVG right here. Rename it to mobile development.svg. Now what I always do is right away remove the width and the height from the SVG. Apply, apply a fill of current color. Then go to the index in the SVG that we've created, just copy this down. Um, and then replace web development with mobile development because that's what we named this file right here. And now if we go to the index page, we can render out our mobile development and apply a class name of something like text 2xl and font of let's say green 500. Let's see how that looks in the browser. We have the icon right there. However, the outline does not seem to be working because, oh, it needs to be text green 500 and it's still not working. Now, honestly, I don't really know why the mobile development um, doesn't work because I just tried the same thing with a different one and that does work. We can try removing some of this stuff that we don't really need. Um, just remove all that, just delete all that. And let's search this file if there's, okay, there is another fill. So that's why this wasn't working. We obviously need to remove um, all of the fills. So not, ev not every SVG is the same. Let's remove all of those fills and check it out. Now it works. Okay, so pay attention to the SVGs you're copying from the web because if you define the fill current color right here, then whatever style you mention right here will be applied to this SVG. But if there are conflicting fills, for example, on the pass, then they will overwrite whatever you applied. So yeah, just watch out for that. Check the SVGs, uh, remove any fills, and then remove width and tight and insert the fill of current color at the top of the SVG. And then you'll have just what you want. You can style it wherever you want with like Tailwind or normal JavaScript styles. And that is how you insert custom SVGs into your next project. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.